Hello and welcome to episode 95 of Missile Industries Ford Falcon 351 project. Now, in episode 94, I installed the power steering into this car after many, many weeks of getting everything together to do it. And when we last left off, it was running, it wasn't leaking, the power steering could turn the wheels, and other than that, that was that for the episode. So in this episode, I'm going to address solutions for the power steering pump in its current position. I'm not satisfied with the way the hard line that I got made up is running. And I actually discovered on the weekend you can actually run it up next to the tower and that keeps the lines well away from the motor and the headers. So I'm probably going to go with that method, but rather than go pay another $199 for another custom line, I'm going to go the easy way and just add some more AN fittings, the AN fittings I bought a few weeks ago and build my own high pressure flexible Teflon line to go to the pump where it sits now. Now, when I did the E30 conversion for its power steering upgrade, the kit that I bought for that was actually comprised of hard lines, Aeroflow Teflon fittings, and Teflon pipe. And the whole thing went together flawlessly. It has never sprung a leak. It's been an absolute gem. So I'm going to repeat that with this using Teflon pipe and Aeroflow fittings. Now fortunately, the people that modified the high pressure line brazed an AN fitting onto the hard line. So all I have to do is adapt my new fittings onto that and the path that I require to keep them all away from the headers and we should be golden. Here are the parts that I will be requiring to make this all work. I think I've done my calculations correctly. I just need to add this 45 to the hard line under the engine and this straight fitting to this swivel fitting which will go onto the adapter straight onto the power steering pump. This actually gives me better clearance than the current line and other than being quite close to the head it would be super handy if this actually faced away from the headers. So we're going to go with that. I'm also going to reinstall this brake booster that I've taken the time to paint black again because it was out of the car. Seemed like a good opportunity to do that, so that's been resprayed. And I also need to fit this engine mount in because the right side engine mount is shot. Which is weird. I always thought it was the left side engine mounts that went. Anyway. So first things first, the brake boost has gone back in after its repaint. I've reconnected the pedals inside, bolted it back to the firewall. Tidied up the wiring all around it somewhat. And uh, next stop, engine mount. So I've taken the weight off the motor via the bell housing. And I've loosened off the engine mount bolts. I'm not sure how far I need to jack that up to get it all to pull out. But those engine mount bolts are 5 8 and all I'm going to do is take those two out. I already have the through bolt for the engine mount removed. So this, fingers crossed, should be pretty straightforward. Here are my two engine mounts. Here's the new one, here's the old one, as you can see, it's gone.
Task number two complete. All right, brake booster and engine mount are done. It's time to do the messy part of this job, and that's to make up my new high pressure line with the lines running up over the shock tower instead of down under the headers. But before I do that, I need to put a drip tray under the car because this is going to get very messy. This is one of the older fittings. So from what I can gather, it's a different size hex. When I was talking to the guy at the power steering shop, he was telling me how the sizes vary for these fittings purely because the hexagonal bar they take delivery off when they do the manufacturing can be out by a millimetre at a time because that's the only bar stock that's available. So when the manufacturer sets an order out, with their supplier, and the supplier goes, look, we've got hexagonal bar in this size. Do you want it? Because we don't have the regular size. They go, yeah, no worries. So unpredictable sizes are the result of that. One high pressure line ready to go. And the plumbing is complete. I've run both the low pressure line and the high pressure line up around the strut tower and then back down underneath the engine keeping the hoses well away from the headers at all times obviously except for that 90 degree bend right behind the power steering pump but for the sake of testing it will do me for the time being all that's left to do now is top up the power steering oil and fire up the car and see if any leaks are coming from either end of the system Summary for episode 95, loose ends. So the booster's back in, engine mounts replaced. I have run my uh, aeroflow hose line solution up around the shock tower. And I'm pretty satisfied with the way that's played out. So chances are I'm probably going to take it for a drive. But not while it's raining. So... That's a wrap for the episode. Oh, no oil leaking out anywhere that I can tell so far. Let's just check again. Nope, still good. Still good. <laughs>